I've wanted to make this viral IKEA Muro coffee table for a while, and today we're making it, but with 3D printing. So normally you make this with the IKEA Muros, and then you just use some parts of a table that are pre-manufactured and have exactly the right length and work perfectly. But since I wanted to make a bigger version, both of that wouldn't have made it possible, so I gotta make my own thing. And yes, I know that you could have also made this from wood that you cut yourself, but first of all, I had some filament laying around that I wanted to get rid of, and this was the perfect project because you wouldn't see any of the filament in the end product. And secondly, I'm not a good woodworker and there's no chance I would have gotten it as precise as it is now with 3D printing. And I wanted that to just easily go together in the end and I have some ideas for how I'm gonna make it even easier to assemble in the end. So let's get to designing. I'm designing this whole thing in Fusion. First, I measured the mirrors that will be on the outside eventually. They are 40 by 40 centimeters and are three millimeters deep. The problem that I ran into with the mirrors is that for them to make a perfect cube, ideally every edge would be at a 45 degree angle for them to like join really nicely. And the problem is they're not. Another thing is that I only have four of these square mirrors and obviously for a perfect dice, I would need six of them. The bottom we can obviously leave out because that would just scratch anyways. And then I of course decided to also leave the back out. I might have been able to buy another one, but actually having the back open is okay because I'm gonna place it against the wall. And then I have that open space to store like cables and stuff like that in there, which actually works really well for me. But of course you could just add an extra mirror there to be able to place it, I don't know, wherever, without having the chance of seeing that very ugly open back. In terms of modeling, it was fairly straightforward. First, I created the mirrors themselves and aligned them how they would be in the table. Then into that, I modeled the feet so they would fit perfectly inside. And secondly, I would add the connectors at the top. Now it was just for the friction connections and I also named everything so I'd know how it would go together in the end. And while all of that sounded pretty easy, I actually had to do two tries because it was fairly difficult for me to model all of these different parts together and keep them fitting, but that did. So now the one thing that I'm a little worried about is tolerances and if things will fit together if they're too loose or don't go together at all. And to test that, I'll just print some of the parts and then see if they all fit together before I print the whole lot. I came back this morning to the printer and something went horribly wrong. These things were supposed to be straight and look at that, how slanted they are. At first I thought that maybe just printing something this high led to problems, but then I investigated. So I just checked the footage and what went wrong there is that I didn't have the power cable to the extruder secured. Thankfully nothing bad happened in terms of the printer getting damaged, but yeah, so just make sure you secure that. It's not a great idea to just leave it hanging. All in all, I'm actually pretty surprised that this print finished at all. But the good thing is the top parts actually finished perfectly. So I can check if those tolerances are working because that's the main thing I wanted to do. So while this print obviously was a huge failure in many ways, actually it's still worth it because I could check that all the tolerances and all the parts actually did fit together. Even the ones that were really mangled actually did end up working. So I know that I can make a huge print of this. Also, I saw that this is, I think, 2% gyro fill and it's still like fairly strong. So, you know, I'm not really worried about this breaking or anything. It's definitely still stronger than that Ikea paper wood thingy, whatever they use. So yeah, I think I'm gonna be fine with this and that's already all the validation that I needed. Since I'm using two leftover spools of filament that I don't really want anymore, but none of them has the around one kilo that I need, I needed to use the Bamboo Lab feature where it auto refills and just switches the filament during the print. The problem is for Bamboo Lab to use the auto refill feature both of the filament colors have to be the same type and the same color. And as you can see, they're not. With normal filament, that's not from Bamboo, you can just switch that whenever you want through the editing function. But as these have the NFC chip, Bamboo doesn't let you edit it, which I guess makes sense, but also for this system is a problem. So I had to do a little trickery to get this working. But as you can see, although it's a different color, it shows the same here. And to do that, I actually put that spool on there 
then put this filament in there so the RFID tag scan that filament put this one's in there and now just things it's the same it's a little difficult but it works but now everything's set up and we're gonna start this 20 hour print As you can sadly see, my perfect plan backfired. So right after the layer changed, something went wrong and I have a huge amount of spaghetti and all these parts are kind of useless now. So if you want to print this, maybe try to just print it down with one spool so you don't have that change. Or I don't know if it's a height problem, but I assume that was the change that actually broke it. So I'm gonna have to reprint some stuff and then I'll try to get it done tomorrow. So after a little bit of back and forth, I finally have all my parts ready. And I know it's a little bit of a colorful bunch, but if everything goes right, you won't see any of this, so it doesn't really matter. So this is really a good chance to get rid of that rainbow filament that you never wanted or something like that. So in terms of mounting everything, this should be easy. All the things are labeled, so long sides are called long, leg is leg, and short is short, just so you kind of know. And since this is tapered, it only goes in one way, and also stops pretty much perfectly once it's inserted as it should be, so you can't really like overdo it, at least not by much. So it's really easy to just get it into place perfectly. When everything is done, you should have four legs, two long top pieces, two short top pieces. And the way that this works is that the long pieces go in front and the short pieces are for the sides. This has to be done since normally if you wanna put things together that are square and have them perfectly square out, you need things to be slightly carved at a 45 degree angle for them to join perfectly. With these mirrors, that's not the case. So I kind of had to work around that and there's like a around three millimeter tolerance at the end. So yeah, we had to make a shorter side, but it's nothing hard to do. And I think it's still gonna come out perfectly in terms of the looks. So this should be fairly easy. I'm just gonna take one of these legs, line it up. The tolerance are a little tight. Since this is 3D printing, some tolerance going a little bit easier than others, but it should all fit. And we want this to be snug. So I also just learned if one of them doesn't fit perfectly, don't try to force it in, rather, you know, try to grind a little bit on the sides off. I think all but one went perfectly and this one I tried to force in and then trying to get it out, I actually broke the thing. So now I have to reprint this. Okay, after a little detour, here's the last piece. So how do we feel about this design by itself? <laughs> and now we get to the one smart idea that I had during this project. I made space for these little locating pins that go right into the legs and when you push them right in they will sit perfectly flush and they will really help aligning the mirror. So if you do this then you can just put push the mirror into all the edges and it's just gonna align perfectly, no questions asked, no tolerances and I think that's gonna make assembly a lot easier. So my perfect plan is for this to insert here. And then you have a perfect break where the mirror can go onto. So for now the table is ready, I need to let the glue dry and then we'll see how everything worked out. So it turns out that these little aligning pins that I was so proud of a moment ago and that was supposed to be my genius idea for this video actually did not end up working at all because I got the tolerances wrong and so they didn't really fit where they were supposed to fit. But the other thing is while assembling everything I feel like there were, first of all, tolerances in the mirrors where it wasn't perfectly, especially depending on the side you were orienting them, but also with the legs were not 100% straight all the time, so I had to wiggle and waggle everything in place anyways. So I can now present to you the fully done table. 
and it is i think a little hard to show it on photo and video but man this thing is beautiful it's just i don't know all those mirrors and you see something different in every in the way it like cast the light it's really cool in person looking at this really ugly backside i'm still not sure i might actually buy another mirror and then just put it there not be able to put cables in there but it might just look so much nicer i'll see how i use it and then depending on that but i can always do it later so it's an easy fix if i ever want to all in all i have to say that printing wasn't as easy as i had hoped i actually did have a lot of complications but i think most of them were my fault on the one part the printer just wasn't correctly set up and then switching those different filaments there probably was a reason that bamboo doesn't let you do that normally so besides that i think since it's designed to just use under one kilo of filament you can just use one spool that you want to get rid of or do it like me in the end and then just print it in different parts and then you can just use up rolls of filament that you don't want or don't need anymore and then that's a good way to use that up looking at the design i think this could have used maybe one support in the middle at the top to give this some extra strength because especially with the 40 centimeter bigger version it might get unstable if you press directly in the middle i think i'll just put something light on it so it doesn't really matter for me but it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind if you want to build this yourself so now if you want to make this project yourself i'm gonna have all the files in the description down below and if you think that was a really stupid idea, why would I ever make that project myself? I actually can't disagree that much. But if you want to watch a video about a really smart project, then you should watch the video about how I actually organize all my storage and gear with Gridfinity. I love that system and I'm always building it out to yeah, organize even better. So check that out. And for now, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye.